In this video, I'm going to find the variance of beta 1 half. So in the last video, we found the expected value. Now I'm going to find the variance of beta 1 half. And before I do that, I'm going to rearrange the numerator into something like this. So this is the exact same thing as I did in the last video. So essentially, I'm just removing the brackets, and this other term that you get will just end up being equal to 0. And the denominator, I'll just use the symbol s double x to represent this summation term over here. So the symbol will be s double x for the denominator. So now I want to find the variance of beta 1 hat. And then I'm going to express beta 1 hat explicitly. I'm just going to write everything out. So beta 1 hat is essentially equal to x1 minus its sample mean divided by s double x and then times y1. And then this goes on and on. So x, x2 minus the sample mean divided by s double x y2. And this goes on all the way to xn minus the sample mean of x divided by s double x yn. So now we need to consider the variance of this term. So note that all these terms over here are all constants. And then these are the random variables. And in order to evaluate a term like this, I'm going to introduce you to a formula. So I'm not going to prove this formula. So if you're interested, you can look up the proof yourself. But I'm going to invoke this formula over here. So I'm just going to use this uh, result. So if we have a term that looks like this, so if all these a terms are constants, and then all these x terms are random variables, then if I want to consider the variance of this term, this is going to be equal to, first of all, the sum of, first of all, you square the constant, so you have a1 squared times the variance of x1, plus a2 squared, the variance of x2, and this goes on all the way to the last term. So you take the constant out, you square it, and then you time, multiply this by the variance of the random variable. And then you add this by 2 times the sum of all possible combinations of the covariances. So we have a whole bunch of covariances, and then you consider all the different combinations. So this symbol here you see in the subscript, this actually just represents all the combinations where i is not equal to j. And then you just add them up, and then this entire expression that you get will be the variance. And so that means if our covari if the covariance between all these random variables are all equal to zero, then I can just essentially ignore this term. And that is exactly what we have here in our case, because all these y terms are uncorrelated to one another. Because recall that all the randomness of these y terms come from the error terms. And the error terms themselves are all uh, mutually uncorrelated with one another. So all the covariance terms will be equal to zero. So we can actually use this formula to evaluate this expression here. And we can completely ignore this covariance term because all the terms will be equal to zero because the covariance of all the y terms will be equal to zero. So now what that means is that this expression over here is now equal to the result given by this formula. So you just take this constant, you square it, and then you multiply it by the variance of y1. And then you take this constant, you square it, and then you multiply it by the variance of y2, and so on. So what that means is that now we have x1 minus sample mean squared divided by s double x squared. So we call on squaring all the constants. And then now we have uh, the variance of y1. And then this goes on and on all the way to xn minus sample mean of x squared divided by s double x squared variance of yn. And the variance of all the y terms are just sigma squared. So that's one of the assumptions of our model. So this sigma squared comes from the epsilon term, the error term. So all the variances are just sigma squared. So I can just pull out the sigma squared and then note that all these terms also have an s double x in the denominator. I can also pull this out. And then inside the bracket, you essentially have the sum of all the x minus sample mean terms squared. So this goes from 1 all the way to n. And recall, this is really just s double x. That's what we define this shorthand to be equal to. So now this term over here, this is just s double x. So this cancels out with one of the s double x's in the denominator. So in the end, we just have sigma squared divided by s double x. So this is going to be the variance of beta 1 half.